Welcome. In this video, we're going to go over the solutions for assignment two for our year 10 trigonometry topic. For question one, you specialize in analyzing non-right angled triangles. Calculate the unknown quantities below. So part A, we've got a non-right angled triangle. We have two known angles. We have a known side length and an unknown side length over here. Now, because we've got these two or two known angles and they're corresponding to two sides, what we're going to be using is the sine rule. So to be able to analyze this, the first thing we do is we label all the quantities in our triangle. So angles A and B and opposite angle B or angle A, we have side A and opposite angle B, we have side length B. Now, because of this, we're using the sine rule. Uh, we're going to solve for the unknown side length. So we're going to go B over sine B is equal to A over sine A. Subbing in our quantities, we're going to get X over sine of 100. And then we're going to get 10 over sine of 30. Rearranging, we're going to multiply both sides by a sine of 100. Therefore, the sine 100 will move upstairs with 10. So we get 10 sine 100 all over sine of 30 degrees. Finishing this off, we bring our calculators up and we type in 10 sine 100 all over sine 30. We execute and it's equal to roughly 19.696 or 19.70. So that's part A done. Part B, we have a similar problem. We have two known side lengths. Sorry, we have two known angles. A and B, and there's a complementary side length. So opposite side or angle A, we have side B. Opposite angle B, we have side A. So once again, because they're complementary angle sides, we're going for the sine rule. Now, unknown in this case is Y, which corresponds to side B. So I'm going to start off by writing B over sine B is equal to A over sine A. Subbing in the values, we get Y over sine of 55 then we're going to get 25 over sine of 50 rearranging i multiply both sides by sine of 55 and this will yield 25 sine of 55 all divided by sine of 50 degrees next step is i bring my calculator up and we go 25 sine of 55 all divided by sine of 50 and we get roughly 26.73. Now going down part C, we have two angle quantities and two side quantities. The angles and the sides are complementary. So this is suggestive we're using the sine rule once again. So I'm going to label, we'll go angle A, side A, angle B, side B. Writing out the rule, we're going to get, uh, it will be sine A all over side length A is equal to sine B over little b. Subbing in the values, we're going to get 17 goes downstairs, sine of Z goes upstairs, sine of 35 goes upstairs, all over 15, which goes downstairs. Now I multiply both sides by 17. This will give me sine of Z is equal to 17 sine 35 degrees all over 15. Then I'm going to take the inverse sine of both sides. So Z will equal the inverse sine of 17 sine 35 degrees all over 15. Now here's where the calculator comes into play. And I'm going to write shift sine, then inside of brackets, I'm going to do fraction 17 sine 35. Then downstairs we have a 15 hit execute. And it comes out to be roughly 40.5456 or 40.55 degrees. So it's important to remember this is an angle, so it's measured in degrees. The second triangle of interest, we have 
a single angle and we have three side length quantities. So we've got 80 degrees and for the side lengths we've got 5, 7 and X. So what you're going to notice is we do not have a complementary angle side relationship. So this is suggestive that we won't use the sine rule, but rather we're going to use the cosine rule. Now the cosine rule solving for the side length is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So basically our Pythagoras' theorem minus 2ab cosine of c. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to rearrange this in such a way that we can retrofit the labels of our triangle to fit in this particular formula. So if we only remember this particular form of the formula here, what this means is that whenever we're working with the, or trying to evaluate the uh, unknown side length, then we label the known angle C. And therefore the side length off opposite angle C will be little c. And then we can just go A, B arbitrarily. It doesn't matter what they are. So long as one's A and one is B. Now next step is we sub in all the values for this formula. So it will become x squared is equal to 7 squared plus 5 squared minus 2, 7 times 5. And then the cosine of 30 or cosine of 80, I should say. All right. Now, next step is we throw all this in our calculators because we don't want to do mental arithmetic on this because then we're more prone to making an error. So we're better off just putting everything in the calculator now. So we're going to go 7 squared plus 5 squared minus 2, 7, 5. Then I write cos 80 degrees. So notice how I'm putting it exactly or in the calculator exactly as I've seen it over here, including the parentheses over the 80 degrees. The reason I do this is because we're less prone to error doing it this way. Now we go execute and we get excited because it comes out to be 61.84. Now here's where we need to contain our excitement in that we're not done yet because this is x squared. What we actually want to do is calculate the value of x as opposed to x squared. So we go the square root of 61.84 and then we take the square root on our calculator. So we're going to go shift square root and then we go shift answer. What this will do is it will grab this value over here and stick it down over here. So we're still getting that as close as or as close to exact as we possibly can. So it's going to come out to be 7.86 like so. So the quantity for x in this case is going to be 7.86. Now if we're going to evaluate the validity of this answer, we look at the angle here 80 degrees and then we look at the other two angles and the corresponding side lengths. What we'd assume is this 80 degrees here is likely going to be the largest angle in the triangle itself and therefore x itself should also be the largest side length. In our case, it turns out to be the largest. So we can be confident that this is a correct solution to the problem. Now going down to E, we have an unknown angle quantity and three known side lengths. Because we don't have uh, two complementary angles with sides, once again, we're doing the cosine rule. So in this case, we're finding the unknown angle. So I'm going to write out the cosine rule for the unknown angle, in which case it's going to be big C is equal to the inverse cosine of, and it will be A squared minus B squared plus B squared minus C squared, all over 2AB. So you can simply just memorize this form over here and then rearrange to get this form when you need it. Now retrofitting the values to the triangle we're going to label z as c and therefore 8 becomes little c and then the other two quantities will be a and b. It doesn't matter which ones they are so long as something is a and something is b. Now putting in the values we get inverse cosine of 
a squared in our case is 9, 9 squared plus 11 squared minus 8 squared all over 2, 9, and finally 11. Going straight for the calculator now, we're going to go shift cos, then inside the brackets, we're going to go for a fraction. So it will be 9 squared plus 11 squared minus 8 squared. Downstairs, we have 2 times 9 times 11. This will come out to be 45.8156 or 45.82. And therefore we get the answer to this particular problem here. So Z in our case is 45.82. For example, F, we have two angle quantities and we have two side length quantities. So this is suggestive we're using the sine rule because they correspond to one another. So I'll label the triangle out. We'll call, we'll call X in this case C because we haven't used it for the sine rule yet. And then we'll go B, little b, and little c. Writing this form out, we're going to get sine c over little c is equal to sine b over little b. Subbing in the values, we get sine x is equal to, or is it over 10, then sine b, which will be 30 degrees, will be over 6, rearranging. We deduce that our value of x is the inverse sine of 10 sine 30 over 6, putting that in the calculator comes out to be 56.44 degrees. Now, when we look at the diagram here, we can see that X is quite a large angle. In fact, it's substantially larger than what the triangle itself is suggestive of. So what this tells us is we were expecting an obtuse angle. However, given the sign rule, we got an acute angle. Now, this particular condition, we call it the ambiguous case of the sign rule in that although this looks obtuse, it still only tells us the acute equivalent. So we'd have two potential triangles with these given values, but one would be acute. Now looking at the example here, or the diagram here, we're expecting an obtuse angle. The way in which we calculate it is we go, x is equal to 180 minus 56.44. This would come out to be 180 minus 56.44 and that would be 123.56 which matches up with what we'd expect the angle to be in the triangle. So if you got up to this stage here then that's correct. That's a solution to the triangle even though it doesn't match up to this particular triangle here. But if you picked up that this was the ambiguous case and then you calculated x to be 123.56, that's also good. So this angle here represents this triangle over here. Uh, if we wanted to verify this on our calculators, we can type in sine of 56.44 and that will give you 0 0.833. And you can do the same. You can go sine of 123.56. And you get approximately the same answer. So what you can see are there are two potential triangles for this potential arrangement of the sign rule here. So we'll leave it here for the first video and in the next one we'll have a look at the other side of the sheet.